I was born Friday, November 28th, 2003, in a jail cell. My mom tried her hardest to get out earlier so she could raise me, but she wasn't able to leave, and in the end, my mom had to beg my grandmother to take me in. At first, my grandma was hesitant because she was already raising my two older brothers, but she knew my mom was desperate. Growing up, my grandma made sure that my brothers and I had everything we wanted. We had video games, delicious southern home cooking, a small house in the countryside, and lots of animals. Like some chickens, and a few dogs and a cat. I could tell that my grandma loved me and my oldest brother the most. She always made sure that we were well fed and loved, but I couldn't say the same for my second oldest brother, Jimmy. My grandma always treated Jimmy badly, and sometimes I would hear him crying at night. Jimmy became so angry that one day he decided to take it out on me. After that incident, I never forgave him, and even to this day, we still have our differences. But apart from Jimmy, everything else in my life wasn't too bad. I made the most of what I could in my situation. When I was about 11 years old, my grandma started to get really sick. She would often be bedridden for days, and it got so bad that we decided that she needed to go to the doctors. She took me with her, and we went to the hospital so they could run some tests. After they were done, the doctor came in and told us that she had ovarian cancer. When I heard that, I started crying. But all my grandmother did was sigh and pull out a mint from her bag. She gave one to me and one to herself. On the way home, I asked her what this meant for our family, to which she replied, I don't know, honey, but if it's time for me to go, then let the Lord take me and judge me. My grandma fought it for almost a year, doing everything from chemotherapy to CAT scans. I tried to focus on other things, like my new PS3 and school, but it was really hard. When we finally heard that she had beaten it, she did the same as when she was diagnosed. My grandma sat on her chair and pulled out a mint, gave one to me, and then to herself. For the next two years, everything was going well. It felt like we could finally be a family again, until one day. My siblings were on a band trip, which meant that I had to ride the school bus alone. When I got back to the house, I saw my aunt Diane sitting on the front porch with my grandma. My grandma just looked at me and told me that she had gotten sick again, but this time, she had liver cancer. I fainted. After that day, my grandma just kept getting worse and worse. She could no longer clean or cook, and she was always sick. Two months later, she was put on hospice, and all she could do was lay on the hospital bed. On Thanksgiving Day, we had a small dinner to celebrate my mom and my grandma coming home. My mom decided to stay with us so she could help take care of my grandmother and make sure she was okay. Eventually, we had to put a bedpan in because my grandma wasn't able to walk properly anymore. My school made cards for her, as well as a huge banner for us to hang in the living room. But a week before Christmas, my grandmother asked us to take it down. We took it down unwillingly, as the banner gave my mom and my siblings a small glimmer of hope that my grandma would get better. The day before Christmas Eve, my grandma's chihuahua started barking at the front door for no reason. I tried to get her to stop, but she kept barking and wagging her tail. An hour later, my grandma looked at me and said, Robert's here. He pulled in on his Harley a while ago. My grandpa used to own a white Harley Davidson with purple wings painted on the side. Grandma even told me where he was standing and told me to wave and say hi. I waved while I choked back tears. I didn't have the heart to tell her that grandpa had passed many years ago. A little while later, my mom walked in and saw me crying. She asked what was wrong. My grandma looked at her and said, Your daddy's standing by the fireplace. He loves you, Jan. My mom was so overcome with tears that she ended up collapsing by the fireplace. After that night, my grandma's health deteriorated rapidly. She couldn't speak coherently anymore, and the day after Christmas, my grandmother passed away. A month after the funeral, my mom ran away leaving my two brothers and me to fend for ourselves. I have never felt so alone. My brothers were old enough to live on their own, but I had to go stay with my uncle. He was a kind man and took great care of me. He made sure I had everything I needed and only ever asked me to do simple chores in return. During that time, a lot happened. I tried to be a good kid for my uncle, but I couldn't handle all the loss and started indulging in shoplifting, stealing cars, anything that would numb the pain that I felt. 
I met someone, and for a moment, I thought it would get better. But in the end, I ruined my girlfriend's life too. I was being an idiot and started speeding. I lost control of the car and I tried to scream and reach out for my girlfriend's hand, but I couldn't find her anywhere. I ended up passing out and when I woke up in the hospital, my uncle told me that she didn't make it. Because of me, all I could do to try to ease the pain was drink. My whole childhood, I always wondered about my dad, if he was even alive or if he ever tried to look for me. Out of the blue, he contacted me on Facebook and it felt like I had been given a second chance. My uncle couldn't handle my outbreaks anymore. After a year of living with my uncle, I asked to live with my dad. Living with my dad are some of the happiest moments of my life. He made me feel like I could have a family again. But two months in, I came home and found him on the floor. I couldn't believe what I was seeing and just ran. I ran as far away as I could. In the middle of the street, I fell to the ground and started questioning. Why did this keep happening to me? What was going to happen to me? I tried to calm myself down, but all I kept thinking about was that everyone around me kept dying. This was all my fault. I later found out that my dad had diabetic complications. I am 15 years old now and currently live with my dad's parents. I've tried to forgive myself for my girlfriend, but every time I close my eyes, I still see her face. It's been really hard, but I'm trying to see the bright side. I feel lucky that my grandparents have given me a chance, and my therapist has helped a lot. I still don't know where my mom is, but I believe that everything will be okay. Eventually, and hopefully one day, I can tell her that I'm doing fine.